Please, agreement part two. If you've been with us, amen, these few weeks, we've been talking about agreement. Bless the Lord, and we're going to go a little deeper tonight. Kingdom key, agreement. Amen. Glory to God. Going to talk about agreement. Again, tonight, I want to talk about the power of agreement. Uh, I don't know about you, but I believe if you're on this live tonight, we're all believing for a dream to come to pass, a vision to come to pass, or praying for a situation to turn around. We're standing in faith. We're trusting that God is working. But something more powerful happens when you have someone agree with you for what you're believing for. Our foundation scripture tonight is Matthew 18 and 19. We can turn there. It's the words of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Matthew 18 and 19. And it reads, for any two of you, if any two of you agree, Concerning anything you ask, it will be done by my Father in heaven. Now, I want to be very practical. I want to break the word down, rightly divide the word. He didn't say just believe for yourself. He didn't just say just stand in faith alone and it will happen. He was releasing to us the kingdom key, praise the Lord. And he said, find someone that will come into agreement with you. He is showing us the power of agreement. When you're believing, glory to God, to take your family to a new level, Lord, to overcome an illness, you, you need people to stand with you with bold faith. Not people that say, well, I really don't see how that can happen. Uh, glory to God. No, no you, need, you need people that's bold enough to say, I'm bold enough to agree with you. We need faith partners in this season, someone that will take the limits off of God with you and believe God for what looks impossible. Here's my first point tonight. Amen. Take the limits off. Type that in. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we see this pattern in Scripture. We know the story about the children of Israel. They were hindered in the wilderness. They wandered in the wilderness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They had a leader that was leading them, a leader that was instructing them the way that God was leading him to. But there was some disagreement in the wilderness. They were trying to go somewhere. Glory to God. Moses was trying to lead the people somewhere. But the people, bless the Lord, could not stay in a place of agreement. Give me Psalm 78 and 41. Psalm 78 and 41. I've taught from this scripture many of times. Glory to God. And it's one of the most provoking scriptures in the word of God. Psalm 78 and 41 says, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. What did they do again and again? They tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, God had been good. God had been good to his people. God had been good to Israel. They were his chosen people. He had lavished them with blessings, praise God, but they willfully reject, refuse to believe, and obey him. How can a person limit God? If you would read the entirety of Psalm 78, it's all about the miracles that God did for Israel. Glory, and I encourage you in your own time, just read the whole chapter. It is an exhortation to talk about the testimonies and the work of the Lord so that we don't fall into unbelief like Israel did. Even though God worked wonders, even though God delivered them again and again, they quickly fell into unbelief and complaining. They forgot so quickly what God had done for them. And let me help you folks, glory to God, complaining limits God. Yeah, complaining limits God. Uh, unbelief limits God. Uh, disagreement limits God. You know, there's another scripture in the Gospels that says that Jesus did not do any mighty works in Nazareth because of their unbelief. God that has all the power, glory to God, hallelujah, uh, uh, to shut every door, to open up everything. He didn't do many miracles because of their unbelief, because they didn't want to agree with who he was. They wanted to say, that's Joseph, that's the carpenter's son. Uh, they, didn't put some, they didn't put respect on his anointing, amen. They didn't agree with what God, or recognize what God was doing at the moment, and so it limited the miracles that could manifest. You know, sin limits God because man has the power to choose. 
Unsaved are lost, not because God wills their damnation. He wishes no man to perish. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But you got to choose. Is that all right? Choose who you will serve. Choose who you're going to believe. Glory to God. Uh, inconsistency can hinder what God is doing. Uh, 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 we got to agree with what God says. We got to agree to operate in his word. Failing to pray limits God. Can I say something to you tonight? God conditions his blessings on prayer. That's why the enemy fights us so much in our prayer life. He, he fights so much in our communion, our fellowship with God, because God conditions his blessings on prayer. What do you mean by that, Bishop Hillard? Well, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, glory to God, repent, hallelujah, I'll heal the land, glory to God, I'll forgive their sin. God conditions his blessings on prayer, on the condition that if my people would pray. You have not because you ask not, on the condition that you will pray. Glory to God. Sometimes you pray and then you ask amiss. Prayer not only changes things, but changes people and moves the immovable. And God releases his power in answer to prayer. Come on. That's what the Bible says. He releases his power. Uh, will answer the prayer. The Bible said the prayer of faith saves the sick. Glory to God. And so we have to move into that place. Amen. Uh, uh, Daniel prayed and they made him a ruler in heathen Babylon. Moses prayed and pardoned the Red Seas. Glory to God. Prayers of Paul opened up the mission fields. Prayers of the disciples shook Jerusalem. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we have to move into the place that we don't want to put the limit on God. We want to be in agreement to what God is saying. God places no limitations on faith. Why do you think the enemy fights you so much in the air of your belief? Because God puts no limitations on faith. All things are possible to them that believe. We limit God, but when we, when, when we limit God, we limit ourselves. Come on, think about that. When we limit God, we limit ourselves. The Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. That's what God says. When we limit God, we limit ourselves. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let there be no limit to your faith. Let there be no limit to what God will do. Let it not be your testimony, glory to God, that they tempted, you tempted the Lord over and over again and limited the Holy One of Israel. Limited what God wanted to do in your life. What's limiting some people is they have no agreement. I want to work a biblical principle tonight. What's limiting some people is they have no agreement. They're believing on their own, and that's good. But when you come into, a, when you come into agreement, it releases favor in a new way. It releases healing and breakthrough and abundance that you won't see by yourself. Come on. One can chase a thousand. And two can put 10,000 to flight. Glory to God. And I believe, folks, that's why the enemy fights the local church. He fights believers stand connected. He, he, he'll fight. Glory to God. Try to hinder you from connecting to a community of faith, showing up the church and, and hearing the word. Why? Because he's after that agreement. He don't want you to get an atmosphere of faith where somebody can agree with you, worship with you. Build you up. Glory to God. Second point, look for the amen. Look for the amen. Glory to God. Type that in. Look for the amen. Give me 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. We know this scripture. For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. For all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God. See, when God puts a promise in your heart and you believe it, you have the yes. You know it's going to happen. But the yes alone is not enough. You need to find the amen. <laughs> Watch this. Find someone to agree with you. 
someone that says, you believe God is restoring health back to you? You believe that by his stripes you're healed? You have the yes? Now count me in. Amen. I'm going to stand in faith with you. I'm going to get in agreement with you. I'm going to lock in with what you're believing for. I agree with you that healing is coming. I agree with you that you will live and not die. I agree, glory to God, that the number of your days God will fulfill. I agree that you're coming out of that stronghold and that addiction. You have the yes. You're standing on the promises. Now find the amen. Glory to God. Don't find the people that are say, oh, no. You really think so? Glory to God. You struggled a long time. It doesn't look good. God's promises are not yes and oh, no. His promises are yes and amen. Glory to God. I said his promises are yes and amen. You know, we say in church, we say in church, glory to God. And a lot of preachers, they say, I don't preach for amens. Glory to God. And I, and I get that. Glory to God. Not necessarily preaching for a response. And I get the revelation. Glory to God. But as I was studying this, you know what? I do preach for amens. Glory to God. Yeah, we, we do need a good amen corner in the church. Amen section. Amen row. Glory to God. Because amen says I'm in agreement. Amen says it is so. Amen says it shall be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I don't preach for amens. I don't agree with that. I do preach for amens. Glory to God. That when the word is coming forth, that you reach up by faith and, and, and amen. Glory to God. Say, Lord, I agree with that. I believe that your word is true. I believe that you're going to bring it to pass. I don't preach for amen. I, no, I want you to preach for, uh, have agreement with the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he said, if you if say, can't say amen, say ouch. No, say amen. Even if it hurts you, say amen. Because God is right. His word is right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's the place we need. We, we need. Hallelujah. It's good to throw an amen. Glory to God. When I agree, I'm going to throw an amen out there. You got the yes? I got the Amen. Glory to God. You don't need to come. Uh, 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 you got to come out of oh no agreements. Come out of negative agreements. People that doubt want to water down your faith. Cause you to get discouraged. Agreement in the Amplified says, glory to God, hallelujah. For as many as the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered. Yes, and through him, we say our amen to the glory of God. Give it to me in the message translation. Glory to God. Can I teach this tonight? Hallelujah. In the message Bible, it says, whatever God has promised, get stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen, God's yes, and our yes together, gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us. By his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes you got to just throw out a yes and amen. Hallelujah. People say you believe that addiction is not permanent, that it can't control you. You have the yes. Good news, I have the amen. Hallelujah. I agree that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. See, when you have a faith partner, someone will add the amen. And listen, when you got someone that'll add an amen to what you're believing for, doesn't it just encourage you? Glory to God. But it also causes the angels to go to work. Miracles begin to set in motion and favor is relief. Glory to God. I believe that's one of the reasons why Paul and Silas, glory to God, experienced the miracle that they experienced because they were together in agreement. They had a yes and a man. And folks, we don't need to overcomplicate this. It's a beautiful thing to find agreement. You have to find your person or find your people. You have to find the amen. And you may have to bypass a dozen naysayers. 
You got to bypass friends that don't believe, co-workers that doubt, relatives that think you crazy. Glory to God. But if you will not settle and get an agreement with doubt, you're going to come into a divine connection. You're going to have a faith partner, a power partner, someone that knows that God is on the throne, that he's fighting battles and has the final say so. Woo, can I encourage you tonight? In difficult times, it's so important who you're allowing to speak into your life. When the battle is raging, you don't have time for a oh no. You don't got time for I don't see how. The opposition is strong. It doesn't look good. Hallelujah. Listen, you can be respectful, but get out of there. And we see this principle, and I can't shake it. We see this principle. We talked about this on Sunday. Jesus cleared the room when he was healing Jairus' daughter until he got an, a, an atmosphere of agreement. He shifted, moved around till there was an atmosphere that was conducive. You know, my brother-in-law always says, talk that language. You got to get around folks that talk the language, talk the language of faith, talk the language of belief. Stop waiting on if only and start living with a no matter what. Don't spend all your time with people that drain your faith. Find people that will increase your faith and inspire you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 When you can gather in faith, glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got the yes and someone else needs to add the amen. That activates supernatural power. Agreement activates the supernatural. And you got to come in agreement. Glory to God. You need somebody that will stand with you and look beyond the natural and look into the supernatural. Someone that will add the amen to your yes. Glory to God. And you have to move. You have to move into that place. Glory to God. You have to move into that place. Uh, not, not, not folk that say, oh, no, you don't look well. Oh, no, your business is down. Oh, no, what you going to do? I'm going to still believe God. And yet I believe God. And yet my faith is strong. And yet I trust him. And yet if one door closes, glory to God, he still has another door. Hallelujah. That wasn't the only way that that, 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 uh, that breakthrough can come. That wasn't the only way. God got a, a many a ways. He got a many a ways. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when you can get uh, uh, into a place of agreement, you know, when Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls, you know, I've been saying, oh, no, but it's really in Scripture. Glory to God. When Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, there were two main critics trying to talk him out of it. Glory to God. He had two main critics. Give me Nehemiah 6 and 2. Nehemiah 6 and 2. That Sam Ballot and Gisham sent to, hit, sent to me saying, come. Let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. Glory to God. But they thought to do me harm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come meet in the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me harm. It's amazing. The city was called Ono. It's significant because these critics were going to try to convince him not to move forward with his dreams to a place called Ono. It's no different today. There are going to be people that's going to try to get you to come to a place of, oh, no. Oh, no, you won't get well. Oh, no, you won't meet the right person. Oh, no, you can't accomplish that dream. Stay out of, oh, no. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And here's the word of the Lord, and, and it's just resounding in my spirit. Pay attention to who you're in agreement with. Who are you letting speak in your life? If it's oh no people, it's time to come out of that agreement. That's going to limit you. Come into agreement with faith field, favor field, all things are possible people. Glory to God. You need to get in agreement with dream releases. Glory to God. Not, not dream stealers. Glory to God. And you got to move into that place because people will try to talk you out of what God said. 
They'll look at the circumstance to study the facts and they'll come up with a dozen reasons why it's not going to happen. And we just have to mature. It's not that they're bad people. They just can't see what God put in your heart. My God, hallelujah. Stop calling everybody bad. Glory, it's not that they're bad people. They just can't see what God put in their heart. They just haven't heard what God told you. They just haven't seen what you saw. Glory to God, hallelujah. That They don't feel what you feel. They don't know what you know. They don't hear the still small voice. And it's a test. Are you going to get an agreement with the negative and go to the land of, oh, no, believe their doubt and water down your dream? Or are you going to say, listen, I appreciate your opinion. I love you as a friend, but I'm not coming in agreement with your doubt. Glory to God. I'm looking for my amen person or my amen people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No offense. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I'm coming to agreement with somebody that's going to ignite my faith. Someone that's going to believe what God has put in my heart. Next point, type this in. Believe for it. Believe for it. Believe for it. Folks, if we're going to get the victories that God has promised us, we have to work the word. And if we're going to work the word, we got to believe. You got to believe in your heart. Glory to God. Stop saying nobody's on my level. I just can't connect with anybody. No, nobody gets me. Glory to God. You know, you keep confessing that stuff out of your mouth. Glory to God. Nobody on the level that I'm level. Come, come on out of that. Glory to God. You got to believe for it. You got, if God said there's power in agreement, glory to God, then God has someone, glory to God, or some people, glory to God that will believe. God has designed people to come in agreement with you. God has designed people to come in agreement with you. And when they agree, a power is released. A favor is released. A blessing, glory to God, comes by the joining of faith. It's the power of agreement. God, I believe that you're raising up somebody somewhere. Glory to God. Sometimes we're trying to do it all on our own. I'm strong. I'm anointed. I'm favored. And yes, that's all true. But you're stronger. Glory to God. When you, when you come into agreement, don't you know we better together? Husband and wives need to come in agreement. What are you believing for? Glory to God. One may have the yes and someone needs the amen. Glory to God. Give me Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 through 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You need to set in your heart what you're believing for and, and make this decision. I'm not going to break our agreement. Glory to God. Even in the household of faith, when we're believing God for something and we're not going to break our agreement. Every day, Lord, I thank you for the promises that you're bringing my way. This is what the Bible says right again at agreement. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. That's what you need, folk. When doubt comes, when negative circumstances comes, we can encourage one another. My God, hallelujah. That's why it's not good to be all out there alone and by yourself. Glory to God. We're not moved by what we see. We're not going to break our agreement. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Two is better than one. Woo, I got a teammate. I'm connected to a body. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. I got some backing. My God, I got a community of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. You better watch all these long range of folks. That's what the enemy wants, long range. But, but you have to move into that place. Let's look at the way. I begin to think about that. This, today when I was studying this, in Luke chapter 1, 
an angel appeared to a young lady named Mary. You might have heard of her before. Told her she was going to have a baby without knowing a man. Seemed impossible. Everything in Mary said, you must have heard wrong. How can these things be that, de that denies the laws of nature? How could someone come into agreement with Mary? This was so far out. Glory to God. She told her fiance, Joseph, she was pregnant. Glory to God, but it's by another man, the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. He probably thought, yeah, right. He wasn't planning how he was planning on breaking off engagement, all this type of stuff. See, sometimes people close to you won't be able to see what God put in your heart. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. But one day the Bible says Mary decided to go visit her cousin Elizabeth in another city. Now, you know what? Elizabeth was an older woman that had been barren her whole life, but she became pregnant with John the Baptist. And she had been carrying the baby for six months and hadn't felt any type of movement. She probably wondered, is this baby really alive? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe she was starting to doubt or get discouraged. But about the time Mary came knocking at the door, Elizabeth opened it and saw Mary and the scripture says in Luke 1 and 41, at the sound of Mary greeting, the baby leaped within Elizabeth's womb. All she probably said was hello, just greeted her. But the sound in Mary's womb connected with the sound in Elizabeth's womb and that baby started kicking, glory to God. What am I saying to you? Somebody can hear your sound. Glory to God. God has somebody. He's connecting you with somebody that'll cause your baby to leap. Somebody's going to show up as a power partner. Glory to God. Watch this. What happened? Mar what was in Mary came in agreement with what was in Elizabeth. Mary came into agreement with Elizabeth and caused her baby to leap. Elizabeth came in agreement with Mary. Glory to God. Maybe nobody else doubt, doubt what was going on. Glory to God. Maybe somebody else thought it was far out. Glory to God. But the same God that caused Mary to get pregnant is the same God that caused Elizabeth to get pregnant against all odds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they came in agreement with each other because both of them, glory to God, were pregnant with a God thing. Woo! Both of them saw something uncommon. Mary, you pregnant by the Holy Ghost, and Elizabeth, you old and pregnant, went well past your age bearing year. Both of you are pregnant with a miracle, glory to God. But God always has somebody that you can identify with. Oh, I'm getting excited. Mary gave birth to John the Baptist and Mary gave birth to Jesus. Both had an impossible situation. Both had only stuff that God can do. Woo! But, but, but when they came together, their spirit began to bear witness. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you, you have to move. You have to move into that place. Glory to God. See, see, you just have to be who God has called you to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was in a place, glory to God, today. And hallelujah, a lady was talking and she said, "Why? Well, I don't know I'm going to go here, but I'm going to say this to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I sent you a believer. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, see, we, we got to learn, folks. And, and she didn't sense I was a believer because I said scripture. I've never said a scripture to this lady. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But when God is doing something in your life, you ain't got to quote a scripture for folk to know you're a believer. Come on. You just, you just live your life and your life will show that you're a believer. God always has someone. I need, I need to establish this in you. God always has someone there to come into agreement with you. And if you're around people and your baby never leaps, they're not the right people. Lord Jesus. I'm talking about when you stand in faith. I'm talking about when you come into agreement. I'm talking about when you're in delicate seasons. Glory to God. They're not your people. 
They may be fine, they may be friends, but you need people to come into agreement that can hear your sound. Glory to God. And when you realize that, you understand, I'm not called to everybody. Lord Jesus. And when you understand that, I don't have to try to convince you. To, you don't got to try to convince people to believe in you. Glory to God. Persuade them to get behind you. No, that's not the right people. Glory to God. And you have to move into that place. Hallelujah. And here's my next point. Choose not to be discouraged. Come on, keep that. Choose not to be discouraged. Glory to God. Choose not to be discouraged. Glory to God. Here, let me establish this tonight. Don't be discouraged when your sound doesn't resonate with someone else. Maybe they're not supposed to be for you. Everybody's not supposed to be for you. Why? They're not in tune with what God is speaking to you. Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes if you come in agreement with doubt and negativity and can't do glory, if, if I came in agreement, glory to God, with negativity, there would be no Hosanna Family Church today. But everybody's not going to agree. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're in agreement with the wrong people, you can miss your destiny. If you believe the wrong thing, you can miss your destiny. Everyone is not going to be for you. Everyone is not going to understand. Some folk going to think you way out there, too far out, glory to God, and that you don't have what it takes. But if you don't make my baby leap, move on. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Don't come into agreement with doubt and negativity. Them oh no people, no I need amen people. Now, here's what the Bible says. Elizabeth, husband, was named Zechariah. And an angel appeared to him and told him that Elizabeth was going to have a baby in her old age. And they were to name his name John. And instead of saying to the angel like Mary, I believe, let it happen, Zechariah said in the verse, how can this thing be? I'm, in, I'm an old man and my wife is, is well uh, is well stricken in years. She's older in A. And the angel said, hey, I'm Gabriel. And I stand in the presence of God. But because you doubt it, you won't be able to speak until the baby is born. And for nine months, hallelujah, and for months, Zachariah couldn't say a word. Why? Now, what's the revelation behind this, folks? Why did God do that? Because God knew if Elizabeth had came in agreement with his doubt, Oh, my God, I feel the anointing. This can't happen. We are too old. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It could have hindered that miracle from coming to pass. Glory to God. And, and she didn't need that, that, that negativity, that bad transfer over into her. Well, you right, Zachariah. I am old. Well, you right. How can this thing be? Well, you right. Glory to God. So the Lord said, let me simmer this down. I don't want this to discourage you. So I'm going to put you on mute, Zachariah, until until this thing See, that's the problem. You let people stay in your ear with negativity. You let people stay in your ear and all that stuff is getting down in your spirit and getting down in your heart. Glory to God. And they bring all that yin yang, womp, womp, womp into your spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, listen, no, he's not the one. He's not the person in this season that's going to help you carry this thing in faith. Carry this thing. Is that all right? Zachariah was the oh no, but Mary was the amen. But God had somebody that she could come into agreement with. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. See, if you'll come out of agreements with the Zacharias, the Marys will show up. The right people will find you. People that will help your baby to lead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I remember, I remember a while back, glory to God, I met with somebody and they said, well, you know, I'm, I'm just not getting what I need. Glory to God. And I feel like I should move on from this church. God bless you. Go ahead on. Glory to God. B because for whatever reason, glory to God, if you're not getting what you need, then go find what you need. Glory to God, because God wants us to be empowered. Come on, glory. God wants this word to work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and it, it may not be that for you, but there is a people that are receiving from the word. Don't come into agreement with the limited vision. Wait for the right person. Oh, Jesus. Who you're in agreement with is going to determine whether or not you reach your destiny. Why am I going here? Maybe you don't have anyone around that's full of faith and that believe that God can do great things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, 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 but you got to say, Father, I just believe. Glory to God. I'm in agreement that you are making me healed and healthy and whole. I believe like Mary and Elizabeth, you're going to see God show out in your life. Favor is coming. Healing is coming. Breakthroughs are coming. The fullness of destiny in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, glory to God, you can say amen. Hallelujah. And this is my last point tonight. Stay in tune. Stay in tune. Stay in tune. Folks, this is the season that we have to stay in tune. So we can make sure, Father, I agree with how you're moving. I want to be in agreement to what you're doing in my life. Glory to God. You better stay open to the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Not my will, yours be done. Glory to God. Be open to the leading of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be open. Glory to God. And filter things so that when the Holy Ghost speaks, you can discern correctly. We need to discern correctly in this season. See, because many believers do not properly test any type of supernatural communication they receive. And as a result, they sometimes get duped by a demon who is trying to masquerade as the Lord with the message he's given them. Is that all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, but you ought to... You, you, Try the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Or te the word test means analyze, scrutinize, prove, or to try. See, we believe that the Lord speaks. We believe that the Lord guides. We believe that the Lord will show you. Glory to God. And if you are receiving any type of supernatural words or messages from God, or, or and then, then let me say, any type of words or messages, it's either coming from one of three sources. Don't miss this. If, if, if you're receiving a word, if you're receiving communication, it's coming from one of three sources, either from the Lord himself or from your own mind and imagination as in the Old Testament has told us some prophets would prophesy out of their own imagination or it could come from a demonic spirit who's trying to knock you off course. And that's why when you believe, glory to God, you have a word. You have to discern that word. You have to stay in tune with the Holy Ghost. Is that all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because sometimes it can come from you. Sometimes you can want a thing so bad. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That you call it God, but really it's what you want. You can desire things so bad and call it God. No, that's what you wanted. Glory to God that you thought it was God. Come on here. Glory to God. And so that's why we have to stay open before God. We have to stay pure before God. Not my will, but your will be done. And when you get a word, can I talk? Glory to God. Does it bear witness with your spirit? Because the number one way the Holy Ghost will communicate to you in this life is through the inner witness or the inner knowing. 
And if you are receiving a true word from the Lord, the Holy Spirit should be bearing witness with that word, come on, out of your own human spirit. So the next test will be, does your own spirit bear witness with the word? I, I, I've received words that my spirit didn't bear witness. And since the Holy Ghost glory, lives within your human spirit, that is where you'll be bearing witness at. And if you're not getting a good witness from the Holy Ghost or the witness feels, glory to God, really flat or dull, then you need to stop and ask the Father for confirmation to make sure this word is really coming from him. Lord, is a word, but is that from you? Woo! Lord, is that me or is that you? Come on here. Glory to God. Is this enemy trying to psych me up? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not getting a good witness from the Holy Ghost is always a major red flag. And since the Holy Ghost is always in perfect unity and harmony with God, glory to God. And sometimes when you think you're receiving a word from the Lord, you may need to run this word by a few wise, seasoned folk so that you can make sure you're reading the word correctly, you're hearing the word correctly. Is it really coming from the Lord and, or, or, not a, or not a demon or your own mind or imagination? That's why you see patterns in the word of God. They would test the word, try the word. The word need to be judged. Okay. My God. That's why the Lord has given us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here's the last thing tonight. Ask the Lord to confirm the word for you. Here it is. It's the agreement. Sometimes you can want something bad enough you feel like it's God. And that's your flesh wanting it bad enough. And you feel like God, because God just wants you, you blessed and God just wants you to have it. You just think it's God. <laughs> Come on, anybody can be real. Glory to God. You moved on some things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, ask God to confirm his word. Uh, 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 another, another big thing you can do, if you're not quite sure if the word is from the Lord, go back in prayer and ask the Lord to confirm the word. And this is one way, glory to God, many believers get in major trouble. Lord Jesus. Because here's what we do. You ready for it? Just give me a few more minutes. Here's what we do. They receive a quick word and instead of properly testing it, and or asking God to help confirm the word for them, they immediately take off running with the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you can have a word and that's not for right now. Lord Jesus. Sometimes you can get a word and that don't mean tomorrow. I can't get nobody. And if the word, listen, so some people get a quick word and they take off running. And if that word was not from the Lord, they end up uh, uh, taking a major wrong turn in their lives and serious damage can come as a result. That's why the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. See, marrying the wrong person because you did not wait for more confirmation from God or, or taking the wrong job at the wrong time could lead to disastrous results. Because you got a quick word, but you didn't slow down and wait for confirmation, wait for agreement. And many believers have ended up marrying the wrong person in this life because they did not wait on God's confirmation to the original word. And the enemy loves nothing more than to try to knock you off your course by getting you to turn in the direction, glory to God, hallelujah. And you should never be afraid to ask God to confirm his own word for you. Woo, my God, hallelujah. And the way God confirms his word can be done in many different ways, glory to God. Here's my last scripture, and I got excited about it. Give me 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. <laughs> glory to God, hallelujah. And sometimes folks got to say, what you doing? I'm waiting on a confirmation. I'm waiting on God to confirm his word. 
2 Corinthians 13 and 1, look at what Paul said. He said, this will be the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Out of the mouth of two or three, two or three that's agreed, glory to God, hallelujah, every word will be, listen, I've been in ministry a long time, and every call that I've had, every major call was confirmed several times before I even walked in it. My call to preach, I would get prophetic words all the time in my youth. My call to pastor, glory to God, hallelujah, confirmed several times. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and things that I'm walking in and things that I will walk in, glory to God, it's witnesses already confirming it. It's witnesses already seeing it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because when it's confirmed, it's established. When it's confirmed, that's surety. Glory to God. Some of you, you know, you, you may hear some prophetic words that have come to this house. We've heard some of the same things several times because out of the mouth of two or three is God establishing his word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will send confirmation. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God will send confirmation. God will send confirmation. God will establish, my God. Paul said, this is the third time I'm coming to you. And by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be, cons shall be confirmed or established. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And what people have found out is that sometime God will cause two or three witnesses to come up to you in close proximity and basically tell you the same thing that God told you in the original word. I don't know why I'm going here tonight. And these two or three witnesses could be total strangers or people that already know, glory to God, but in either case, they will know nothing about the original word. See, sometimes you got to watch folk that want to confirm something they already know. And you can't be crazy and booped and, and easily manipulated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Many times prophecy is used by God to help confirm what was already given to you by him. And sometimes the person that's prophesying has no prior knowledge of the original word given to you by God. You know, one of the main things I hear all the time in Will Prophetic Church, Will Prophetic House, glory to God. They say, Bishop, through the word you gave, glory to God, it was confirmation. God was just talking to me about the same thing. Glory, God was just showing me the same thing. You gave, I hadn't talked to you, I hadn't talked to nobody, because that's what God, and every time somebody tells me that, I say, and that's God establishing his word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's God establishing. That's how you know it's manifesting. Glory to God. I, I spoke about money being released. And before I got out of service, somebody said, Bishop, I saw the same thing. Glory, I saw money being released. And that's God establishing his word. Glory to God. God's coming through a, a whole nother way. Woo, my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But, but, but it still got to be filtered. It needs to be, it, it, you got to trust the Holy Ghost. Not people that want to proffer lie. Not people that just want to tell you something because they're telling you something. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. When, when you get a person prophesying over you up to two or three witnesses come with no prior knowledge, you need to take note of what God is saying. And you need to trust the anointing. Glory to God, because God, God can also use dreams, visions, and possibly a very strong witness from the Holy Ghost to help confirm. Glory to God, out of the mouth of two or three. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God. And listen, the more serious decisions you make, the more weighty matters, the more you need to wait on confirmation. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said the more serious matters in your life, the more major changes and shifts in your life, you need to wait on confirmation. You need to be sure. My God, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. And some things you can ponder in your heart and the Holy Ghost to come and confirm them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, but, but that's how we got to discern. And that's why even if God is causing you, is, if God is giving you a word for somebody, make sure you ain't prophesying what you want to see for them. Make sure you ain't prophesying, oh, that'd be nice for them. No, no, no. You decrease that he may increase. Because everything that look good may not be good. Come on here. Glory to God. And some stuff that might not look good is good. So we got to be very careful. My God, we have to be very careful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord will confirm it. The Lord will confirm it. One way or another, the Lord will come out of the mouth of two or three is every word. Glory to Jesus. And you will know that confirmation when it does come to you from the Lord. You will not be able to miss it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you got to make sure you're not anxious. You got to make sure that you're in the right place from God so that you can be centered into what God is saying. And you got to discern, is this from God? Glory to God. Is this for now or is this for later? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why we got to be careful just preaching what somebody want to hear prophesying just what somebody want to hear. That's dangerous, folks. If you say you got a word from God and you're giving somebody a word, you better make sure it is a word from the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't, don't be lying confirming stuff. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be saying stuff because it sounds good if it's not the right season for it. Agreement is a powerful thing. Glory to God. And you don't want folk to get an agreement with a lie. Get an agreement with a false prophecy. Jesus, my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, we, and so we, we have to move. We have to move into the Holy Ghost. No, he knows who to bring. He knows. He knows how to connect. Hallelujah. And it's all for his glory. So you got to stay in tune and stay in line. To what God is saying. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I believe there's some folk on this live. You don't want to miss God in this season. Whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. I don't want to miss you, Lord. I don't want to miss you. Glory to God. I want to be in agreement with what you are doing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. And we give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that you've given us your word. You've given us instruction, prophetic instruction. You've given us clarity through your word tonight. And we thank you, God. Hallelujah, that we come in agreement with heaven. We come in agreement with what you are saying. We come in agreement with what you are speaking in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for sound word, sound counsel in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. Make us sober in our thoughts. Make us sober in our ways, O oh God, so that we may be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and thank God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To 